So, as I struggle to write essays and videos appropriately with a slew of ideas thrown out the window, I thought, hey, what about series I, too, threw out the window? As I started watching anime, I remember series I stopped watching for some reason or another. I would later learn that people call these series something they dropped. Since I'm in a slump, let's go back to the first series I ever dropped, which is... Night Wizard. Shit. Back in 2007, I watched the first episode shortly after it premiered, and then proceeded to stop watching it. The story made no sense, the characters had nothing of interest, and the world seemed so confusing. It first appears like a magical world, then there are weapons like mechanical swords and guns, then a car that can hover while existing in the modern world. Of course, there are isekai stories similar to this, but it gave me nothing to care about. Here's the main character, Renji Hiragi, a normal high school student whose mission is to just go to school in order to graduate. He wants to maintain that perfect attendance record or something. You know, unlike every other anime protagonist. However, this little brat here, Anzalati, prevents him from doing so. She gives him a mission to defeat these things called emulators, and then find jewels in order to go to the emulator's homeworld and destroy it. Insert colonization joke here. However, she says, where both mean yes, and takes away Renji's agency of choice. She acts like she gives him options, but not really. So, she takes him to another world in various methods right before he's able to attend school. You thought Toma Kamijo was the most unfortunate? Well, Renji is a contender for that spot. It's like his luck stat in a D&D campaign is absurdly low or non-existent. Eh, whatever. Either way, Renji is a knight wizard, a being with powers from far the earth a representation of our own world that fights emulators unbeknownst to the rest of humanity. He uses a large sword and looks swole. Renji isn't alone, however, as there are three other characters in his party. Kureha Akebane is Renji's childhood friend and leader of the astronomy club at their high school. She acts like a doting mother to him and is a shrine maiden with a crossbow that fights as a night wizard. Then she asks, You're coming with me forces the new student on her first day, Ellis Shiho, to join the astronomy club. We later learn that Ellis awakens powers inside her that allow her to become a night wizard as well. She has these shields that act as containers for the seven jewels the group looks for and is the key to opening the gates to the emulator's homeworld. Finally, Akare Himuro, a young girl with a cool personality who shoots guns in order to protect the vessel to either save or destroy the world after multiple attempts. Where have I heard that before? Her weapon is called Gunner's Broom, which brings up my realization that all weapons in this universe are called brooms, when they are wizards, not witches. I would think they would be called staves, but I guess they can't ride their weapons like brooms then. Our party now consists of a swordsman, a cleric, a paladin, and a ranger. Huh. Interesting. Anyway, the party goes through several different worlds to acquire each jewel. Some of them are easy to complete, while others, not so much. During the times when players are out of commission, more people will join the party to go through each dungeon, that being Nightmare and Mayuri. Both saved Far the Earth from destruction in the last iteration of Akari, and returned to help the new heroes not to destroy it once more. Plus, we later learned that there were multiple wars of people saving the world from demons. What the fuck is going on here? It's as if they constantly reset after completing the storyline, I have to look this up. Oh, apparently Night Wizard is a Japanese tabletop RPG like Dungeons and Dragons. Created by the Far East Amusement Research, or Fear for short, people create their own player characters to assume during campaigns as wizards to fight the emulators and their bosses as demon lords in their own dungeons. And apparently the anime adaptation used an actual campaign featuring the staff of Fear and voice actors of the anime in preparation for its release to promote the property. From what I can find, they used the second edition of Night Wizard and Shunsaku Yano played Hiragi Renji, 
who was already a player character from previous replay logs posted in magazines. Ellis was created specifically for the anime and served as a plot point and appears to not have a player assigned to her, so she is sort of a traveling NPC. Speaking of that, Kuriha was an NPC in various replay logs, but for the anime's campaign, she is played by Mikaki Mikako, the illustrator for the Night Wizard books. Meanwhile, Akure Himuro's VA, Eima Kokude, played herself during the campaign, as well as Anzalotti, who she also voiced and is the dungeon master. Which means this little shit who kept pulling out all these world-breaking stops to bring her players to herself is the DM of this campaign. Additionally, two fear employees, Shinji Tanaka and Taro Suzufuki, played Moyuri and Nightmare, respectively. The writer of the Night Wizard novels, Hiroshi Tanaka, also participated in the campaign, but his character, Guido Borgia, did not appear in the anime at all. So yeah, Night Wizard's anime is based off an actual campaign using the tabletop RPG of the same name. This newfound information explains so much about what happens in the anime, all of the weird instances of being transported to other worlds, the battles varying in difficulty from being insanely easy to extremely difficult, and then some scenarios just playing out weirdly, like this fucking sword turning into a boomerang or a character dying and then being revived shortly thereafter. It's because they were literally rolling a dice for their fate. Hiragi Renji probably had a 1 in his luck stat, so that explains all of his misfortune, yet with the few rolls he had that were high, allowed for him to get a breather to actually attend school. Then, for those moments of complete bullshittery that defy logic and reason, is because someone probably rolled a 20, and the DM had to come up with some stupid reason to explain it. I want to revive Kuriha before a battle with the final boss. Um, sure. You can try, but I don't think that's going to happen. I rolled a 20. What happens? Shit. Um, let's see. Uh, the demon lords you defeated in past dungeons felt sorry for your loss and came together to combine their powers of mind to revive Kureha at the last seconds to repent for their sins. Woo. Now, the DVD release in Japan comes of two commentary tracks. One with the director, a staff member, and a voice actor, and the other is for the campaign. I went to find this commentary to see what happened in the actual campaign, but uh, yeah, take a listen for yourself. Congratulations! If you're hearing this, then you are in fact not death, but the commentary uploaded has no audio. I don't know if it had it originally, or if the publisher muted it with a copyright claim, but appears to be unavailable as of now. It seems the only way to acquire it is through importing the DVDs, but given the global pandemic and barring of shipment overseas in the foreseeable future, we cannot see what actually happened on those commentary tracks. I would imagine it played out quite similarly to the show, but they had to take liberties to cut content and stuff for production time, like the aforementioned Guido Borgia character. Although, maybe not knowing what happened is a good thing. Just knowing the context that the animation is based off an actual campaign is very helpful and allows viewers to think about what happened. Many of the scenarios and battles resulted because of dice rolls, and then a dungeon master needs to come up with certain reasons with their creative imagination. You can think, oh, this person probably got a low or high roll here, so that explains why it went this way. Pretty fun and enjoyable way to rewatch the series knowing about its history and conception. Originally, I was going to say this is the first ever anime adaptation of a tabletop RPG campaign, but apparently, Record of Lodos War, as well as the other works by Ryo Mizuno, are all based off campaigns he did with his friends and compiled them into stories using the Sword World RPG system. Not only that, before the boom of mobile phones and video games, what was a popular way to promote an anime? That's right, tabletop RPGs. Man, anime really was for otaku back in the 90s. Series like Dragon Half, Scrap the Princess, and Macross got their own tabletop RPGs back in the 90s, and even current series like Log Horizon got its own in 2014. Anime and RPGs, who would have thunk? No, it was insanely obvious. Heck, some of them have been translated overseas. Remember that Shinsaki Yano guy I mentioned earlier that played Renji? Yeah. He created Double Cross and was brought over to the US. It's about people with powers labeled as pure breeds or hybrids that battle each other for supremacy. Huh. N never mind, scratch that. 
Regardless, it was a good thing to revisit a series I dropped with a third eye. All it needed was some research and a new perspective. Sadly, the animation is awful and the quality is stuck in 480p like the rest of this video because it released only on DVD and there is no licensor for it outside of Japan. What's the moral of the story and how do I end this video? Shit. Hello everyone, thank you very much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any comments or criticisms about this video, or if you want to talk about the anime in general, please leave a comment down below. If you enjoy this type of content, I hope you would like this video and subscribe, I would greatly appreciate it. Additionally, you can follow me on Twitter or Twitch, the links will be down in the description below. This video serves as sort of a break before my larger project, which I will go into later. So hopefully this keeps people interested. Either way, thank you very much for your support, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Poof, poof.